Tomorrow is the 66th anniversary of the Little Rock Nine, a group of nine African American teenagers who were the first to enter a segregated school in Arkansas in 1957. And it happened after a historic Supreme Court ruling. In our ongoing series, Race in America, The Conversation, I talked to one of the Little Rock Nine who now lives in Marin County about her fight more than six decades later. How do I feel? I feel that we have to do what grandmother instructed. We have to continue marching forward. So we're not going to stop. There is no stopping 81 year old Dr. Melba Patillo Beals when it comes to the fight for equality. She came into this world on a historic day. I was born in 1941 on the day that they bombed Pearl Harbor. Later, Dr. Beals would become part of American history, all because she was a black teenager who wanted a good education, like the white students. Growing up in Little Rock, Arkansas made it very difficult. If a white person was walking down the sidewalk towards me, I had to step off the sidewalk. I could never look at a white person. You could not go to their bathrooms, drink out of their water fountains. I saw a man hanged to the top of my church. And uh, that really upset me because I was like five. Lynchings were normal for you to see. Yes. Out the back door, it, the question is, what's hanging on the line? Is it somebody's baby? You know, and so I, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't something I, I got accustomed to. Despite the horrors, Beale's rebellious spirit and independence sometimes turned her focus. Education was important in her family. In 1954, the Supreme Court issued a landmark ruling in Brown versus Board of Education, saying separating children in public schools based on race was unconstitutional. Little Rock's Central High School was an all-white school then. My teacher asked one day in school, uh, who among you wants to go to Central High School? I just raised my hand. And when she said, you know, take these papers home to have your parents fill them out, eh, you know, I'm going to do that myself. Why should I? I don't want to bother my mom with that problem. So I filled them out and took them back. And so my mother never knew that this was going to happen, that I was going to be involved. She didn't tell me to do it. Um, once they knew I was going to do it or wanted to do it, at first they said you can't. They said no because she says groups like the KKK went house to house threatening black families. Now here's what you have to get is that we were nine people. When we started out, there was 114 of us. So those 114 were talked down to nine by the people visiting, by the threat. <laughs> But then 15 year old Melba was determined despite the dangers. The situation was so bad, President Dwight Eisenhower got involved. Mm -hmm. I never got to be a student at Central High without the President of the United States sending down the 101st Airborne Division. That's how I went to school. Like soldiers go to war, is how we went to school every day. She would only attend Central High for a year before coming to California. The NAACP decided that they had to get us out of there because the Ku Klux Klan had $10,000 dead, $5,000 alive on our heads. They found cities for each one of us to go to. The Santa Rosa NAACP was white folks. And so they bid for me, they got me, and that's how I got to California. Beals got her education. She became a journalist, an educator, and award-winning author. Now we get a situation where they're trying to pretend like Central High School didn't happen. Dr. Beals is talking about a recent decision from the Arkansas Department of Education that puts restrictions on an advanced placement African-American studies course. Several schools have said they will teach the AP course despite the state's objections. I'm 81. I've carried the banner this far, and I have eight colleagues who've done the same. You just create warriors, and that's who we are, warriors. And, and I'm going to do what my grandmother said march forward. I really just am so inspired by you, Dr. Beals, and I'm, I'm glad to know you now and to have this moment to speak with you. I'm, I'm very honored. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Every time we can get the word out that we're not going to crawl, it's a really good thing. Oppression is just a lovely big word, but it does not apply everywhere. Yeah, really powerful conversation. When Beals arrived in the Bay Area, she stayed with the McCaves, a Quaker family in Santa Rosa, who she says would later become her family. And later, she got her bachelor's degree in journalism at SF State and went on to get her master's at Columbia.